What's up, YouTube? This is uh, King Kobe JFS in the video. Um, I'm in the process of trying to get a car. Um, I gotta stay for my driver's license and all that, so um, that's what be my next goal here. Um, this is my friend Kent. He works with me at Wendy's. Um, he's a place to crash. He was sleeping in his truck. I said, you know what, you can come stay with me until I get your own place. It's cool, dude. So, yeah. And he's a pretty cool dude, you know. He's quiet, doesn't make too much noise. <laughs> it's probably a good thing so the neighbors won't hate him. I imagine the neighbors didn't like Chris that much. But Anyway, I called Stephanie, and it was good to hear from her again. It really was. Um... I try to act all macho, which I'm not going to miss her, but the truth is, I miss her terribly. I really do. Um, you know, there's a couple of times, you know, I'd wake up, and she came to visit. She's right there next to me in my bed, all snuggled up, all cozy and warm next to me, and that felt fucking amazing, man. It's just like, holy fuck, actually. Got a girlfriend, you know, and then, <sighs> lo and behold, she started talking about moving into the apartment. She moved to Casper. I'm like, holy shit, things are moving way too fast. Slow down. <laughs> we knew each other for like a couple of months, and it's just like, bam, you know, things are taking off. So, I don't know, you know. And, you know, the long distance relationship with Stephanie was hard, you know. I'm thinking to myself, this, this, is, this is, you know, you know, I'm thinking, you know what, I can get a girlfriend in a job court. I could probably try to get more in Casper. So I broke up with Stephanie thinking I could actually get a girlfriend in Casper. It turns out it's not as easy as I thought it was. Job court, that convenience of small campus. Not very many students. People knew each other really quickly. Within a week, and knew everybody. So, yeah. But it was good hearing from her again. It really was. So, I don't know. I don't know a personal shit to work out. But. I just think I got a haircut too, and so you know, talking about you know shopping for jeans and stuff. I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, so I think personally, um, I started doubting the relationship and wondering why am I still in it. Long distance, I got depressed, and the depression ate away at me to the point where I wanted to just, you know, I figured Stephanie could probably be with someone who was closer to her, but. I think, you know, if I really want Stephanie back, you know, I gotta be able to make it work and just, you know, know that. I don't know. Man, I really don't know. But, thing of it is, man, I miss her terribly. I really do. And I wish I hadn't broke up with her. I wish I could be with her right now. I wish I could hold her again. It's nice, you know. Uh, personally, it wasn't just the sex, man. It was, man, we are awesome at communicating with each other, and we have a lot in common. So I think, you know, I had something going good with her, and I'm not going to screw things up too badly. You know, it'd be nice if I could hold her again. Just, but, oh well. I don't know, man, if she's got a boyfriend or not. Um, I checked her Facebook. She's doesn't update anything, you know, just talking about her day, I guess, and I think to myself, holy shit, you know, but, yeah, a little cigarette, so, it's not much, but, I like the Trey Black track, that was pretty good, yeah, it's pretty good, I got a, it's a Walmart, so you're both out of tobacco, so I'll show what, what tobacco I got left to make it happen, you know what I'm saying? Because life's hard. When you got to struggle, it helps to have someone there that cares for you, you know what I'm saying? It's your friend, you know what I'm saying? And with Stephanie, I care about her a lot. I really do. You know, I try to pretend like I don't. But then I see some guy, you know, posting shit about her on Facebook. So when you're going to come back to Colorado, I'm like, who the fuck is this scumbag? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. But I can tell you from personal experience, a lot of this relationship sucks because the thing of it is, she kind of she come to see me and oh god, it was awesome those those couple of days, you know what I'm saying? But then, freaking, 
she'd go back to job call her and be like, oh, it's gone so soon, you know. But, oh well. I think I'm, I'm constantly broke. I make no fucking money. But I make enough to support myself, and that's pretty awesome, so. And it may not be much, you know, scrubbing piss off a toilet for eight fifty an hour, but it's a job, and I'm damn proud of it, so. You know, it's better than no job, so. You think you're trying to get a car, but cigarettes are expensive. That's why you switch to rollies. They're a lot cheaper and easier to make. Mm -hmm. Big ass bag of the Bonds of Vega Four Aces pipe tobacco. It's twenty bucks, and I've had this bag for a couple of months now. There's still a lot left in it. You see, you make a lot of cigarettes with that. Granted, you have to roll them by hand with a zigzag roller and papers, but it's a lot cheaper in the long run than buying them by the pack, and they're actually a lot better when you let that tobacco air out and just get really stale. It's, it's got a nice taste to it, so. Cheapest series you can get right here. So, yeah. In fact, me and Stephanie's song is, is um, Here For You by Ozzy Osbourne, and it's a good song. I tried to listen to it the other night, and I can't listen to it all the way through right now. It just hurts too much, you know. It just reminds me of Stephanie, and oh god, it makes me wonder so bad. You know, but and ironically enough, Stephanie doesn't mind the fact that I smoke tobacco or drink or watch porn because she watches porn too. So, and most guys are like, "You idiot! You had an awesome relationship with her, you jerk!" And I kick myself every day for it. And I just, oh my god. And I think, you know what, well, why does this crap sucking me back and try to get a girlfriend on Casper? It turns out it's not working. It's a lot harder than it looks. And I'm not exactly the most confident with women. And Stephanie didn't care, you know. Awesome, awesome person. <sighs> but I realize, you know, I, I have feelings for her. I really do. And I, I miss her terribly. And... I think to myself, if I admit that, that makes me weak, but it doesn't. It just means that I have feelings for her. That's okay. So, yeah. But. <sighs> I got ketchup stains all over my pants. Because, oh and behold, I have the ketchup pump I was changing in the lobby, and the. There's a tip that pokes into the bag that helps the whole system flow, ni flow, flow nicely, and I popped it into the bag, and it popped all over my... And as I was carrying it to the bag, you know, some of it spilled out and got all over my pant leg here, so I have to wash that off, but... I think to myself, you know what, what's, you know, what can I offer Stephanie? I mean, I barely make enough way to support myself, and I think, oh, she gets a job, you know, it'll actually help a lot with you know, support and stuff, so, yeah, but, ironically enough, I was going through my computer, and <laughs> I found a couple of videos that I never seen online like at all, I mean, Stephanie having sex, and I thought that's just for my personal use. And I thought to myself, oh, look how happy I was, and look how happy she looked, you know, just in that moment of lust and awesomeness. I think, oh, God, I miss that. I miss being able to hold, hold her and make her feel special, because she makes me feel special, you know. And she was the first girl to actually give me a chance, and that says a lot for me personally, because growing up, I was never the ladies' man, you know. Um... And I've been really angry these past couple of days. I think it's because I miss Stephanie and I, you know, and yeah, stuff like that, so. And people talk all the shit they want. Oh, you gave her a Hot Pocket. Wow. Well, considering I don't make much at Wendy's, I make enough to support myself and buy a couple of groceries. That's it, you know, and pay rent and internet and, you know. And try to cut back on my smoking for money, you know what I'm saying, and start rolling these rollies because they're cheaper and they're a lot healthier for you because it's pipe tobacco, but yeah. Ugh. 
Uh, so, yeah. Well, I talked to her, and it was good to hear her voice again. It really was. It's just a text message, you know. It was like, oh. You know, it wasn't a dream. It was real. <laughs> I think it's, you know, growing up, going through life, I'm trying to analyze everything, and I realize I see Stephanie full of just sex, I see her as an awesome person, you know, we have a lot in common, and we connect so amazingly, it's just, it's weird, because I grew up my entire life, you know, chicks just don't give a shit, they're like, this guy's a creep, oh, it's Josh, eh, you know, Asperger's, not. I feel sorry for him, whatever, you know, I mean, Stephanie, she looks past all that, and gives me a chance, and <laughs> it definitely made a difference in my world, because especially at Job Corps, too, when I, I first got there, chicks were not talking to me, then they saw how awesome I was with Stephanie, and they're like, oh, he's actually a gentleman after all, I'm shocked, and then they start talking to me, like, oh, now you care, <laughs> whatever, dude, so, yeah. I remember the first time Stephanie had sex, I had no clue what I was doing, and I didn't go to my dad for that advice, or my mom, because I didn't want to be awkward about it. So I asked Stephanie, help me, please. I don't want this to be awkward for you at all. And, I, you know, I learned a couple of things. And my buddy, Danny Frank at John Corps, who's a complete man, he's had sex with a lot of women. You know, he taught me a couple of things, too. So, yeah. But I can still remember the way Stephanie chased, so... So this is def this is definite sexual attraction between me and Stephanie and well me especially and then it was also something deeper than that you know it's believe it or not she likes to listen to Slipknot she doesn't look the type of listen to Slipknot but she likes to listen to Slipknot and I thought wow <laughs> we should so I don't know you know I miss her terribly I really do but. <laughs> I try to act like I don't, but I do, you know, and, yeah. <sighs> oh, I went and checked out a couple movies in the library because I figured, you know what, I don't watch a comedy, maybe brighten my spirits a little bit, so I read the two comedies in the library. This one was so badly scratched up, you couldn't even watch it. And I've seen this movie a hundred times, so I know it by heart. But this one, I couldn't even start. It just fucking stopped, so I can't, at the beginning of the movie. So it just could not be read. I'm thinking to myself, really? Now, here's the thing. They don't have movie stores anymore. If you see one, it's like, oh, what's that? You know, it's like the episode of South Park. <laughs> but the thing about it is, that, you know, they pay someone to sit on their ass all day and make sure the DVDs are clean. They have a lot of DVDs at the library. I think, you know what, that'd be an easy job. Just sit on your ass all day and make sure the DVDs are clean and working. You think to yourself, that's, that's not much, but the thing of it is, it's a courtesy, you know. These DVDs are so fucking scratched up, I can't even watch them on the PS2, and my computer won't read them. So I'm thinking, ugh. Oh. So I think, you know what, it's life, it happens. So, yeah. But... You know, you know, I'll admit, you know, Stephanie started talking about moving in with me and shit, and I thought, oh, fuck, dude, I'm not ready for this, you know, I just, holy shit, I have just met her, and it's like four months, and boom, we're already having sex, you know, and planning on moving in together and shit like that, and, you know, it got to me, it was like, holy shit, this is, you know, but, you know, I realized that I've had roommates before, you know, and I'm comfortable with that, you know, it's, but, you know, so. Now, ironically enough, Stephanie actually has the exact same sense of humor as I do. You know, she'll laugh about necrophilia and make jokes about it with me, and we'll sit there and laugh about it all day. It's like, that's fucked up, but yeah, it's ironic as all hell, you know. So, is Stephanie my soulmate? I don't know, but I, all I do know right now at the moment is I miss her terribly, and I wish I hadn't broken up with her. You know, so... Well, because that's just the thing, when I was dating Stephanie, I had so much confidence, I figured to myself, yeah, right, you know. But then, first couple of weeks being single, I'm like, all right, I'm single, let's let's do this, let's find some chicken, make it happen, you know, and, yeah, no.
<laughs> so yeah, it didn't work out like I thought it would. So, and that's just the thing about confidence, especially with me, because I have no confidence in myself whatsoever. It's amazing I even play guitar. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, that's that's just the thing too. Is I thought to myself, well, if I can carry that confidence, but I, it's just frustrating. It really is. I miss her terribly. I really do. But and you know what's ironic as fuck is that I work with women all day at Wendy's, and I got no problems with that, but. When you're single, it kind of sucks, because, just saying, and, you know, I do my best to keep my mouth shut and, you know, work, because it's not my place to flirt in the office, it's just, it's a sexual harassment policy, and I just, I don't want to risk it, and you think to yourself, well, and here's the ironic fuck of it all, is that 98% of people I work with are female, there's about a 2% male population, so we're outnumbered, man. In fact, this point in time, you know, I'm, I'm carrying this huge thing of sweet tea for the lobby. I'm like, sweet behind, you know, I'm trying to carry it behind me and stuff because it's big. You, know, you got to stay behind so people are, because that kitchen's tiny. So you want to run into someone, you know, and I'm spilling a beef or getting burnt or something like that. So, you know, one of the older women's like, now she knows when I'm behind Josh. You think, you think it's sweet, don't you? I'm like, no, it's, I think she's being a smart ass, but still, it was like, really? Oh, come on now. That's just creepy. Come on. Uh, but, you know, it's, you know, work humor, I guess. So, you know, you don't want to get to you, you know, so. <sighs> fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. And then I go and see the pictures of me and Stephanie on Facebook all happy together and shit. And I go, oh. <sighs> but. So, I'd love to get back together with Stephanie. I really would. And I think at this point, I found out time to myself to think, you know what? I wouldn't mind if she moved in. I think that'd be fucking awesome. You know what I'm saying? So, if she couldn't get a job in computers, I could probably get her a job at Wendy's, you know? So, I mean, it's fast food, but it's better than no job. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, if I got a car, too, that'd be really convenient for both of us. We could work at the same place and share a car, you know, that would be awesome, so, yeah, the car I'm looking at, you want 2000 for it, but it's a pretty sweet <laughs> car, the interior's got these dark emerald green seats, luxury, oh, so, well, I called the guy and let him know, and wait to hear back from him, so, and I got my flashcards out, so when I come home from work, I want to study those, because right now, I can't focus on anything with Stephanie, all I think about Stephanie right now, and I God damn it, I miss her terribly. But, yeah. But, you look deep in thought. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah. Well, the thing of it, too, is that I don't know if she has a boyfriend or not, so I don't want to seem like, you know. I don't, I don't want to seem desperate and, you know, you know what I'm saying? I called her and, you know, oh, God, it was good to hear her voice, though. It really was. It was like, oh. But, I don't know. So. In fact, I might just stick those videos on my iPod just so I have something to look at when I go in the bathroom just because I thought I'd get bored. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that's perverted. Nah. But, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> what I can do is that. Because on 
this folder I got going here. And, um, yeah, I can make an untitled folder and make some space on it. I can delete some of the photos I have here. They can what? I have this app, my iPod Touch, called the Jiggle app, which is perfectly innocent because you can take a photo and stretch it and it jiggles, you know. So <laughs> I managed to find a way to make it perverted. <laughs> I took a couple of risque photos of women and, you know, set the jiggle to their breasts, slow it down like, oh, it jiggles. <laughs> awesome. Because apparently I, Apple rejected an app for that I call the iBoob Jiggle app, and apparently it was because it was, they thought it was too pornographic or some shit. I'm like, really? Wow. Okay, here's the thing. If there's no sex involved, it's not porn. Because you Google porn, guess what pops up? Sex. And it's misleading sex, mind you. So, yeah. The thing of it is, too, man, is that with iPod Touch, I can watch video on it. So I can actually put porn on me and Stephanie made on my computer on my iPod and watch it on my convenience when I'm not at home. Because I have the worst luck with women. I'm very awkward with women and I you know, I try to play smooth but I'm you know incredibly socially awkward and I finally get a chance to get a girlfriend and I break up with her because things are moving too fast and I was confused and Doubting my emotions, long distance depression, and it's just a wonderful combination. Then you throw in the drinking too, and it just kind of heightens it. So, yeah. But get rid of all these, a couple of these photos here, and just make room for the videos. I don't know how much space the iPod will hold, but I don't know it's a lot of space, but the thing of it is, I don't want to. I tried listening to Here For You by Ozzy Osbourne the other night. I got through half the song. I turned it off and it was something like Cannibal Corpse. Something more angry and metal sounding because it just... It brings up too many memories, man. You know. So, I don't know. I really don't. Okay. Scroll through my documents here. Let's see. Garage band, naked chicks, band photos of bands I like, garage band, weird random photos. Some old houses, some CD covers, miscellaneous shit. <laughs> I might add one of my CD cover, I'm not sure. I might not. It's all gonna depend, you know, if I like what I see on the album cover. If I don't, I might, you know, I like what I got with the album cover so far. It looks pretty good in my opinion, but yeah. Let's see here. I know they're here. Let's see. Go to movies. Ah, oh, there they are. Okay. There's one. There's two. Okay. Now put them in my untitled folder. And my iPod charger. Plug in my iPod. Where the hell is my iPod? 
Oh, it's right there on the. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. And then she started talking about, you know, she bought some jeans that were too tight. I'm like, oh, and then she talked about another pair of jeans that she had super kept on coming undone. I'm like, oh, you know, and I couldn't help myself, man. I just, ugh. So whether or not Stephanie will take me back, I don't know. But I would love for her to be, have an us thing in on, just whatever. I mean, I made some mistakes. I cheated on her, and I feel guilty about it. That's why I told her about it. You know, if I didn't feel guilty about it, I would have kept my mouth shut. But the thing of it is, I have a conscience. It's hard to believe an awkward fuck like me has a conscience. But, yeah. So, yeah. That's the sort of making machine. So, I figured, you know what? <sighs> I may not be making much at Wendy's, but I'm making it to support myself. And if, if Stephanie came and moved in, I think it could make life a lot easier for me, you know. But what, if I can't, you know, I'm struggling and having a hard time. I can have someone there to understand, you know, because Stephanie's been through a lot too, believe it or not. So, yeah. Apps or. Okay, and it didn't work out like I thought it would. There's got to be a way to put these on my iPod. There's got to be a way. Include video. Check mark. Apply. Sweet. <laughs> now I kind of have a piece of her with me when I, wherever I go. She's not with me. I can remember, you know. You're thinking that's just perverted and sick, but yeah. You said you've been to a couple marriages, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. What fun were they? <laughs> He's smiling like, what? <laughs> it's fun, I guess. You know, What's well, fun for us? Better sure. than being single, I guess, from my point of view. Yeah. I think, you know what, whatever depression I'm suffering through, it's not worth being single. Being single sucks. And you think to yourself, it always sounds great when you're with someone, but then you stop and think about it and go, actually, no, it kind of sucks because I'm one of the awkward dudes hanging out because, like, you go to a bar with, with your buddies and stuff, and it's just like, yeah, you're the awkward ostrich in the corner having a Guinness to yourself going, oh, yeah, uh, don't mind me. I'm just <laughs> tagging along. You know, I'm the wingman here. You know, this guy's getting all the ladies here. You know, don't don't mind me now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He laughs, but it's probably true. I, I bet you anything, you would go into a bar, chicks are going to be all over you, dude. Guarantee it. Not always, because I'm kind of quiet, you know? Yeah, but that's you got the mysterious thing going on. Chicks dig that shit. You yeah. know, it keeps them guessing. Let's face it. Okay, I'm so sick and tired of women saying, men are just assholes. I'm sick and tired of guys saying, I'm sick of sluts. No, no, no. Okay, here's the thing. One, women, you want something, you communicate. But then, after watching a video, ironically enough, called How to Tell a Fake Orgasm, a real one, I posted it on Facebook. It turns out sometimes women do that because they love you and they want you to feel special. But don't take it as you're a failure. Take it as, oh, she's helped me get off. That's awesome. And then next time, you know, hey, you know. And I'll admit, the first time I asked her, Stephanie, I didn't know shit. So I asked her. I said, Look, I'm new to this, as you are, and I want this to be awkward for you. I want you to enjoy this as much as I'm about to enjoy this, so help me. <laughs> what would you like me to do to you? And, you know, it was, you know, taking that courtesy, and it paid off. <laughs> it paid off wondrously. Yeah. 
So, yeah. But, so, let's see if it's, check my iPod here, make sure it connected correctly. Let's see, videos. Let's go back. I got a couple of music videos here I downloaded from YouTube. We're trying to get my iTunes car. I want to download the songs I have on here. That way I'm not mooching completely. That's all I like to do. So, yeah, let's just see here. What the fuck? Okay. So maybe it's in photos. Sweet. So, yeah. Yep, they're there. Would actually play though. Fuck yeah, they're playing. Sweet. Okay. Cool beans. Alright. Cool. I can carry stuff with me in my pocket. Aww. You're like, that's just oddly romantic or oddly perverted. Maybe it's both. I don't know. All I know is I miss Stephanie. I miss her terribly. But, yeah, man, you know, I think a couple months of being single and not having the best of luck with women, I realized that, you know what? Screw this. I want Stephanie back. This is not fun. I screwed up and, you know, whatever. You know, so, yeah. So, yeah. The part of what I do on YouTube is, you know, not just sitting here expressing myself and going through, you know, I think I realize now I see her for more than just sex. And I might have thought that in the past, man, my depression talking, but, you know, I see her for more than just sex, man. She's an amazing woman. She really is, you know. I'd give anything to have her here with me right now. I would. But she's still on job core, unfortunately. She's on personal right now, so she has back to job core tomorrow. Ugh, you know. But, yeah. What is job core? Well, job core is a government program. They, you go in there and they they feed you and they give you housing for free and they pay you like at the most 50 bucks every two weeks. You have to work your way up to that though. And in between that you're taking education and training to get a trade and stuff. It's a great program, but the particular job where I went to was not the most professional in the world. I could go on for hours. That's all the hypocrisy I've had to deal with at that place. Yeah. But it wouldn't be productive and it just ended up pissing me off and you know, the way they preach you, like, oh, job course is your last opportunity to make something of yourself. I'm like, is it now? Look, I've got my own apartment, i got my own job. It's a real new job course. So, yeah. you know, that could be your pickup line. Like, I know a guy who used to work for the government. Ooh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, I was I was kind of a troublemaker at job crowd, I'm not gonna lie. And I've heard of it before. It's yeah, it's it, it came in, like it's there's a certain age. Yeah, sixteen and twenty five is the age limit. Yeah. So and most of them are high school dropouts, don't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? Throwing them into a corporation of government run bullshit, you know, it's just like yeah. Most yeah. of them don't even give a shit. So then they go and give them these jackets and give them the authority to become student leaders and enforce the rules that they break. It's kind of, you know, yeah, those yeah. are fun. Especially when, you know, you got your Lodge One, you know, I was a member of Lodge One. It's a pretty awesome Lodge, too, you know, and so they're in Lodge Meeting. Oh, yeah, guys, we're going to quit horse playing running up and down the stairs. It's a safety hazard, and the guy doing that was just doing it five minutes before Lodge Meeting. I'm like, hypocrite, and everyone started laughing then. And I was told to be quiet. I'm like, no, this is bullshit. If I'm going to say you're going to be told to follow the rules, you know, 
they screw anybody by example. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it made me any better. I'm not saying it justified my actions. I'm just saying that I'm being told yeah. that this is how it's to be done. Then they better do it. If I'm expected to do it, they're expected to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Rules are rules. And it's just, yeah. <laughs> and when I first got there, it wasn't like, it wasn't half bad. You know what I'm saying? It was all right. But then over the past couple of months at John Quarry, it was like, oh, you know. I remember the last check out a crush on my friend Stephanie, and it was it got to the point where if I smelled cotton candy, she would those perfumes smell like cotton candy. It drove me insane. I went to Chuck E. Cheese for lunch for my 21st birthday. You, know, you can laugh all you want. You can laugh too, you too, but my sister wanted to go to Chuck E. Cheese. I was like, eh, what the hell, you know. They got good pizza, and the games are reasonably priced, so who the fuck cares, you know, and they actually offer beer there, so... <laughs> You know, you just like, fuck it, I want to go to Chuck E. Cheese and get a beer and a pizza and play a video games and not give a f- no, I'm kidding, but, but yeah, anyway, they had a cotton candy machine there, and as I'm walking out of the door, I got a whiff of cotton candy, I'm like, oh my gosh, she here, I'm looking around, like, oh, what's the cotton candy machine? <laughs> okay, this is, uh, and I'm like, you know what, and it, it, it got to that point in my life where I've been chasing girls since I was 13, I was 20 years old, and none of them were taken to me, you know, they all thought I was a creep, or I was just, eh, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, you know what, I give up, screw it, I got bigger shit to worry about than trying to get laid and get a girlfriend, I got bigger priorities, my only get, get out of fucking job for, because, you know, this is, you know, whatever, so I quit caring, and then, on top of that, job course depression, I attempted suicide with, with a guitar string, ironically enough, I had it tied around my neck like a slip knot, so, and one of the Jack of the Leaders came in, caught me trying to kill myself, I had to talk to staff and all that shit, and then, about a month later, I met Stephanie. <laughs> so every time I've attempted suicide, you know, there's always been something to remind me, you know, not to do it. Uh, oh, and the irony, John Corbin heard about my suicide attempt, and all of a sudden, just you're talking like you're all signed for me, and she's like, oh, Josh, what are you thinking? And I'm like, well, I've watched just talking, I should attempt suicide more often. <laughs> That's my grim, grim sense of humor. <laughs> but, yeah. And out in the irony, I get caught with some pot at John Corps. The same Jack Lee that stopped me from killing myself, read me with some of my buddies on. Five days in a homeless shelter, back in the castor, got my hair cut and everything. My hair was a little longer than it, what it is now. And, yeah. And now I'm here. After months of working at Wendy's and busting my butt, making a lobby look good so I could have an awesome apartment. So, you know, people want to talk all this shit you want, but life can get better. You know, you might fuck up, you might be in prison for something you did stupid, you know, but the thing is, you're in prison, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's just the thing, too, is I've had thoughts like a serial killer. I've admitted, I've thought about it, and I thought it'd be kind of cool, but I thought, you know what, I see the shit that goes through the documentaries of hiding the corpse once you've destroyed it, you know, or done whatever you do with it, and I thought, it's kind of a pain in the ass. All puns aside, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You know, um, so I think to myself, it's not worth it, man. It's not worth their life. It's not worth my life. Because then if I get caught, I'm screwed. Yeah. And then I got no apartment. I got them in jail. That's some guy I don't even fucking know. You know, and I don't think Stephanie wants to visit me in prison either. So, yeah, no. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> if I want to talk about murder, express it. I'll go through, play on a video game or express it in my music. And that's always helped because it helped me get rid of some of that anger I've had built up. So, yeah. That's why you're seeing the album cover the way it is, is because I'm angry at society, and I want to just say, fuck you, I don't care, here's an album, you know? Yeah. So, I'll offer it for free, too, but it's, you know. You're a Raiders fan, huh? Yeah. My dad is, but he quit watching football because it pissed him off so much. Oh, really? Yeah. My dad's got high blood pressure, so he had to quit watching football because it was pissing him off so much. Some people get way into it, though, like, way too into it, like, that's bullshit, my dad's there, just, you know, look like you want to check the remote of the TV, I'm like, it's just a game, good lord, yeah. but, I don't know, I guess, I don't understand people's addiction to sports, and I don't understand my addiction to music, so, have you ever been paintballing? paintballing? Yeah, it's fun, yeah, job core off of that, as no, as a, Elective was one of the things they offered. It was early fall, colder than fuck out. I'm in nothing but my pajama bombs and a mesh t-shirt and a bandana on my head and my and my boots on. You know, I'm like, let's do this. You know, I'm fucking freezing, free balling, sitting there, ready to go. You know, and I'm sitting there, you know. And then 
one of the chicks walked by, and unfortunately, I got a boner, and I'm not exactly small, so, yeah, one of the chicks noticed, ran out screaming, and then one of the Asian kids, he came up and smacked me in the dick, like, whoosh, like, I'm like, dude, God, no, and ironically enough, his name was Plogay, and this, <laughs> no, this guy was weird, man, but, you know, it's okay, he's just, I'm getting out of the shot, I got my child out of me, I'm sitting there fixing my hair in the, in the, dorm bathroom and he's he comes in and make a bowl of ramen noodles in the sink and he's like I'm gonna see your dick I'm like no I'm not that's gross dude come on <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah so you met some interesting people at job Corps. I think he's just doing the fuck with me and I really could care less at this moment but <sighs> sweet now I got Stephanie on my iPod awesome so yeah Ironically enough, one of the videos consists of me and Stephanie watching porn together. Really ironic. Sorry, I find a girl that likes so much porn. Yeah, and she actually doesn't care that I smoke cigarettes. She does not care at all. She does not bitch or complain once. And when she gets on her period, she doesn't get cranky. She just gets groggy and tired. Yeah. So it's like, dude, that's like awesome because, and then, and all, I, I care for her, man. I care for her so much. I wish she was here right now, but... I don't know. I don't want to rush things, you know what I'm saying? Because I think that's what happened the first time we got together, is we rushed things. But then, I know the minute she gets here, I want to kiss her, and then if she does get back together with me, it's yeah. going to be like church bells ringing, cradle of filth and fancy mean playing in your head, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, I don't know. And just talking to her, you know, I feel, I feel a lot better than I felt in a long time. I've been so freaking depressed lately, you know, and... So, I don't know. But what I do know is, I miss Stephanie. I want her so bad. I can taste hers. Mmm. And it's not just the sex, man. You know, like I said, and people don't get that twisted. I repeat myself on YouTube. So, pardon me for repeating it again. You know, it's deeper than that, you know. But, whatever. Well, you're still friends with her, right? Yeah. So. Well, that's always a good thing. Yeah, at least we're still friends. You know, friend zone, awkward, you know. Um, yeah. So if I can get that car by the time, if she if does get back together, I mean, that'd be nice if we could have a car, you know, I could tint the windows and repaint it and make it look all nice and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The interior, I thought it was actually blue, it turns out it's dark green. The seats are actually a dark green, and it's, so it looks really sharp. That looked really sharp with my my sound system, the blue speakers, and then, of course, that's where I got a stereo system in. I noticed that, and he's like, that's, if, he, if that's why he's, he's charging two thousand dollars for it, I'm gonna be like, look, you can take your CD player out, and I'll put my system in if you want to lower the price because I got a sound system for it anyway. So, right. I got the flashcards, and all I do is when I get home is I'll read them. I'll sit here and listen to Avril Lavigne and read them because they'll keep me distracted, you know. And then I'll pass out, I'll wake up and be fresh in my head, and just keep doing that until I know it by heart that way, you know. Or what I can do is I can record myself reading the questions in GarageBand and then listen to it on my iPod while I clean the lobby. That works too. You know, and that way I can study while I work, which is actually convenient because I like listening to my music when I clean lobby and close it anyway. It makes, you know, it keeps me focused and productive, so, yeah. But, oh well. In fact, a number of times when Stephanie gets to take off another for us and John Court and have a little bit of fun, we got away with it like that. And by the time staff found out, it was like a couple months later, and I don't think they really cared because even though it was against the rules, they saw I was actually trying to be more productive with John Court actually trying, and they saw how happy I was, and they saw how happy Stephanie was, and they're like, you know what, if it makes them happy, we're not going to say anything. But then they turn around and say, well, it was your tolerance policy for drugs and all that other shit. They catch me in the pot on campus and they, they terminate my ass. It's like, yeah, no. Bullshit. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. But, oh well. I can remember a situation I went through where 
one of the other guy dorms, there was a douchebag choking on one of my dorm mates, who I didn't care for, but it was still part of my dorm, I'm, and you just got an underage, and I'm like, why don't you pick up someone your own size, you know, and this guy started talking mad shit, and he's like, you know, what are you going to do with us, Hans? I'm like, whatever, I started to walk away, he let's go, that guy chokes me out, and this guy's half my size, I could have easily kicked his ass, but I'm like, you know what, I'm here at Job Corps, I'm God, it was frustrating. So I walk back in a trade, angry, and my instructor, he's like, what's up? And I'm like, I told him what happened. He's like, you can press charges. I'm like, you can press charges? Really? So I go to dorm staff, and I told him what happened about the incident, where this guy was going on choking people out for a sick amusement. This guy had a history of it. The person who was choking out before me was a minor. Oh, yeah, big-time offenses, according to our society. And it's also violence. Zero tolerance policy for violence, right? So I pour it to staff. I press charges. Well, the guy he choked out drops out of job court, doesn't press charges. On top of that, the guy did the choking, and the guy was choking the guy was choking people out. Didn't get in trouble for it, didn't get punished for nothing. I'm like, that's bullshit. On top of that, I'm sitting there, you know, they I'm just sitting there living I'm like, this is ridiculous. Where's your zero tolerance policy now? You know what I'm saying? And so I'm sitting there smoking a cigarette, and I have dorm court for a stupid right if I got. You know, I'm thinking, ugh. The same Jackie Lee that stopped me from committing suicide comes out. He's like, it's hard as you got dorm court. I'm like, oh, shit, sorry. He's like, don't worry, we're going to go tonight. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. So even if, you know, justice will slow, but know it comes in the end. It's a quote by Ozzy Osbourne. It's off his song, Life Won't Wait. And you know what? Life's not going to wait for you, man. Uh, I thought to myself the whole time, I'm thinking he's getting away with being violent on campus because his girlfriend's a jacket leader, and of course, you know, if you're involving a situation with students. And here's the thing: um, supposedly you're not supposed to walk between the dorms; you're supposed to go up the hill or walk around because apparently you're just not supposed to walk between the dorms. I don't know why they had it, but this is winter time, and walking up that gravel road was icy and slippery, and I didn't want to slip and fall. So I thought, you know, what? I want to walk around by one of the dorms so I don't slip and fall and hurt myself. And so twenty of the of these jacket leaders from, like, I think dorm two or three were started talking mad shit, and you're on track all gangster and shit, like, whatever. Like, hold on, I'm gonna give you a write-up. I'm like, for what? For walking between the dorms? I'm like, fuck off, you know? They are talking mad shit and whatever. And then they turn the rap into disrespect to a leader, which in staff's eyes looks pretty bad. And I told them, I said, look, this is complete bullshit. There was ice on that hill. That hill is nothing but rock, and it's just solid ground because you're out in the middle of the fucking forest. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm being disrespected here. Whoa, whoa, can you I name the individuals that did it? And then nothing happened. I got the write-up drops, and that was, that was it, you know. And I think to myself, okay, so and every month, every every six months, they'd have a new batch of Jackie leaders. And my joke was, oh, a fresh batch of hypocrites. Ha, ha, ha. I mumbled to myself in the assembly, and people would kind of chuckle because, you know. And, you know what, I was pissed off, with it, but rather than let it get to me, I decided to make jokes about it. Welcome to Drama Corps. More rules and trees, as they'd say, you know, and make fun of it, and people took it as me being negative. I'm like, no. Sometimes I'm angry, I, I find it easy just to make jokes about it, and, you know, it helps me with my stress. And because it didn't matter how many times staff would bitch about students harassing each other and the usual bullshit, they never changed. It never fucking changed. It just got worse and worse. And by the time I left John Paul, I'm like, I was actually sad because I wasn't going to see Stephanie, but then that's all I, you know, and because really, you know, and I, I have I was doing pretty good in trade, too. I Office administration. <laughs> you know, I, I could be making 14 bucks an hour to sit on my ass and answer phones, but no, I'm actually making 8 50 an hour to actually work. And, you know, I was... At job Corps taught me a couple of things, you know, professionalism and all that. So, yeah. And, you know, fuck, dude, I'm waiting for them to appeal my thing, and they haven't appealed it yet, and at this point, if they say, well, you can come back to job court if you want, I'd like, kiss my ass, I got my own apartment, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I got a job at Wendy's, you know what, fuck that, you know, so, and they said to you, you know, the way they, they talk to you, it's like, well, if you're at job court, that's good, you know, act like it's your last chance in life, I'm like, it's not, you know, I mean, even if you're in prison for, like, a murder you committed, you realize you're fucked up, and if you don't care, you don't care, that's your, that's your life, you know, but if you're in prison for something you did that was stupid, you got to open your consequences, be a man about it, and just accept it, you know, because you fucked up. You made the decision, 
you made the decision to fuck up. So here's the thing about life. You have the control of your life to make whatever you want with it. You want something bad enough to find a way to make it happen. I want a car. So I go, hmm. I call the guy, left a message, got my flashcards, went to study him. So, yeah. I was studying them at work, but uh, but the thing is, my backpack's cluttered and, you know, I don't know. I got like a 15 minute break, so that's enough for me to eat a sandwich and smoke and then get back to work. I was sorry, you know, get back to work, so. Yeah. So, yeah. And this is why I don't make YouTube videos that much. It's because I make them every day. I want to actually to talk about. You know, I sit here and ramble on about nothing, you know. But, yeah. You want a video? Here's your fucking video. <laughs> you know. And part of my depression was some of the negativity I was receiving on YouTube. So, you know, I thought, why should I fucking care anymore? I quit caring and look how my guitar playing improved drastically I got faster where I did so yeah but we're taking a break from my music so I can rest of it you know because I'm trying to fire all this creativity into music like I did the YouTube video eventually I burned out and it's like ugh I got nothing so nothing's really sticking for chords so I'm like you know what I'll take a break from my guitar playing and you know just work, work on better at my job and maybe get a car so yeah and here's the thing I'm going to mount this on the hood of my car, if I get the car I want, the car I'm looking to get in, this Cobra. This car looks sick as fuck, dude. Sick as fuck. It's not probably what Cobra can used to have. But, yeah, I figured, you know, if I can get a car, doing good. I called the guy who was selling it, and he wants 2000 for it, but I noticed that the roof is um, hail damage, half the taillights are cracked. And it's got some nicks and dings in the paint. And I'm thinking it's an older car. He wants two thousand for it. Hmm. I'll I give him, I'll give him a thousand for the most of it. But if he's willing to make payments, I can do that too, you know. And yeah, so which isn't a problem for me as long as I see if I get my car, my driver's license, it'll make things a lot easier. Uh, think about spending on gas for your pickup because you. you Kind of give me a ride to work and stuff. Mm -hmm. It really helps. You know, if I get a place to stay, it helps me out with the ride to work. You know, it helps him. I help him out with knowing Gaff because he's new in town. So I figured, you know what, you know. And that's just the thing is you don't see that kind of like kindness in our society anymore. And that's just the thing that really irritates me the most is that you don't see someone holding the door for somebody anymore. You don't see, you know, the how do you do, you know, the respect in our society has gone down so much and it's just. The bars were set so low. So I was like, you know what? They can be disrespectful. I can be ten times worse. That's why you have the CD. It's just the way. It's just, I don't give a fuck. Here it is. You know. So that attitude you saw, that persona, that energy you saw, like a chart video, when it's getting so many views right now, that's what I'm putting into the CD. And when it's done, I'll post a link in that particular video. And you now, why you, you ask? Because by the time I'm making that CD, with the views growing the way they are, by the thousand each day, I post that video. The link for the CD in that video. When it's done, it's not done yet, but when it is done, I will post it. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> well, I feel a lot better getting that off my mind, but anywho, this is a uh, King Cobra JFS with another video, and I thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.